Hi, writer friend. I am Margo Starbuck, and I support writers at wordmelon.com. Today, we are going to learn about pitching podcasts from book promotion savant, Lizbeth Meredith. And I have mad respect for her. Not only did she independently publish her memoir, Pieces of Me, Rescuing My Kidnapped Daughters, but after the book was published, she has just been a genius about promoting it. And I know this because on Amazon, it has over 500 reviews, which is amazing. If you don't know that yet, it is amazing. So I learned so much from her and I'm excited for you to learn from her as well. So it's like, I help writers until their book is published and my friend here <clears throat> helps them, helps you after your book has been published. So if we're talking to writers, Lizbeth, like what, why are we even talking about podcasts? Why are we talking about pitching podcasts? I'm so glad to be here today with you. And I am so glad that you asked that question because to me, podcasts are the new writer's book tour. The pandemic has showed us that at any moment we need to be prepared to go nowhere. <laughs> But we still need to promote our books because never before have more people relied on books to sustain them. This has been an off the chart year for writers and publishers. There have been a lot of people reading, but there are a lot of people, in fact, a ton of people listening to podcasts now. Podcasts are so fabulous because it's a way for an author to have content out in the universe, and for all marketing, people who are considering buying an object, let's say anything, whether it's shoes or a car, certainly books, the person needs to know, like, and trust the individual who's selling to them. Podcasts present that way for a potential reader to get to know the author in an up and personal way, up close and personal. Also, keep in mind that audiobooks are very, very popular now. And where do people learn about audiobooks? It's podcasts. They're already trained to be listeners as they're walking, as they're riding to work, as they're doing chores. Now they are listening for what to read next. Because this is all new to me, do I want to try to get on just any podcast or how do I figure out what the right podcast is for me? Well, Margo, that is such a great question. And you absolutely want to be very specific about which podcasts to get on, just as you are specific about where to market your books, right? So a person wants to find a podcast whose listeners like similar books. One way to do that is to start listening to podcasts but also go, let's say if your book is available on Amazon as an example, or Barnes and Noble, someplace where you can look for reviews online, look underneath that profile on Amazon and look at customers also bought. When you see that, you can sometimes punch in, you know, if you have your profile, it has your book there, find out what customers also bought, then put that author's name in the search engine Let's say it's Sally Smith podcast, author Sally Smith podcast. This is a hypothetical. And then you'll be able to find where similar audiences are listening. You know, it's a wonderful thing. So there are other sites that an author can go to and just put up a profile, almost like match.com, but maybe with a little less rejection. And so the author can put up a profile, maybe put their picture up or not, put their book, uh, list their book and podcasters who are also looking and have their profiles up. Let's say matchmaker.fm is one of the examples. You, the podcaster will be looking for someone whose book has similar themes. So for instance, I, my podcast is launching. It's about persistence for people who are survivors and strivers. Now, I will be able to look for people whose keywords have something about strength, survival, resilience, vice versa. If you are an author with a book, maybe it's Christian historical fiction, something like that, that author can 
again, put those keywords from their book in a search engine and find out which podcasts are looking for them. This is so helpful. As writers are kind of searching podcasts, what should they be looking for? What should they be discovering in that process? Well, I think that they would do well to discover who the audience is. So if they are looking at a podcast seriously, first of all, if they're looking to be a guest, they should find out before they do anything else, if that podcast is accepting pitches for guests, they would save themselves a lot of time. <laughs> then listen to an episode or so. Look under the reviews. Are these listeners the same kind of lis listeners who are prone to want to read your book? Is this your people? Um, is this your tribe? You will know after you listen and look under comments. A lot of podcasts have an associated uh, social media, such as Facebook, something like that. So you can even go there, see what, see who is reading or who is listening to that podcast. Are those your readers? That's one good way to find out. Now, an author is not limited to pitching podcasts with book themes similar to their own. They can also look for podcasts geared toward writers. Writers are voracious readers, and we are also big super fans because we understand how hard and lonely it can be in our writing process. We are big fans to support one another and to elevate one another. And so if you have a story about the process of your writing, about your discipline, how you show up on the page, maybe some things that happened in the process of writing the book, that would be a different set of podcasts for writers. And you can inspire them with your failures, your successes, your persistence, all of that. I've heard you say that before, and it's always counterintuitive to me that I should be trying to reach writers, but I hear what you're saying, and I do think you're right. As I'm looking for podcasts, should I just be looking for the biggest, right? That's kind of what my intuition is telling me, but my intuition is often wrong. Should I just be looking at the big ones? My thought on this is, you know, first of all, I never want to squelch anyone's enthusiasm because you never know if you could be that one in a million person that pitches a very popular podcast and ends up on that show. I believe that you're better off looking at your own author journey, look at your platform, because I'm going to tell you that podcasters will be looking at your platform. A lot of popular podcasters want to know how many people are on your newsletters list, Margo. How many people are on your Twitter account? How many people do you have on your Facebook author page? They want to know that. So if you have a super popular podcast, they have huge expectations. They may not even chat with you unless you let them know in your pitch that you have 10,000 Twitter followers. I think you're better off starting off to find a podcast that's similar in their journey as you are to theirs. And so if you have, are a mid-list author, look for a mid-list podcast. You can find download numbers if you like, but just look at reviews, things like that, and be able to justify in your head, I believe I bring this podcaster's listeners some benefit. I believe my story, my book, my journey would bring them benefit. And that's who I'm going to pitch first. And you can get your practice of being a great interview guest on by starting small and moving forward. That's really helpful to hear. I know that you kind of walk writers through the steps of pitching a podcast. And I think you've said that the first step is to kind of grab their attention with uh, yeah, attention grabbing subject line or whatever. What's, how do you do that? I think podcasters, just like literary agents or publishers, they're busy. And if they're a popular podcast, they're getting 50 to 100 uh, pitches a week. That's a lot of people to be sifting through in addition to their other chores. So if you can put in the subject line, podcast pitch, colon, and then whatever it is that you are pitching, that would be super helpful because they can quickly synthesize what it is that you're looking for. Inside of your pitch, 
Then go ahead and propose three different topics in bullet points, very short, concise, beautifully written. Three things you are comfortable talking about that you believe their listeners would benefit from hearing. And how will they know that their listeners will benefit from hearing? Well, you are going to be that smart author and you'll have listened to an episode or so. You'll know how long that podcast is. You'll know what kind of introduction and what kind of exit they have. And you'll make sure that you have a message that resonates and makes a contribution to their listeners. After all, podcasters are not looking to sell your books. They're looking to please their audience and bring them value. And so they'll want to know that you have thought that through and made it easy for them to do so. Oh boy, this is right where what I do and what you do line up as I'm coaching folks to write book proposals in your cover letter, I want you to be concise. I want you to be clear. I want you to tell them, you know, why you're writing. So let's say that you've launched with, and I love three specific ideas that you could talk about on their podcast. Some writers aren't thinking about what it means to offer value to the podcast's audience. What, how, do you, how do you even offer value to them? Well, I believe it is through getting to know who their listeners are and making sure that you've looked at the podcast description and seen what their sort of mission is. And then you want to factor in that you believe you align with that. And so that's really important, to, like I said, to ch even check social media, podcast reviews to see if you can hear their listeners actually speaking. What do they like that week? What don't they like that week? And make sure that you fit in to what they are attempting to convey. I think this is where, you know, you and I really see eye to eye as we are helping writers who want to be published and writers who have been published, this business about offering value to the podcast audience. I'd like you to say a little bit more about that. Absolutely. All of our readers are, they have something in mind. They have a pain point. They have some need, whether it's even to be transported and to have an escape, they have a need that our stories provide them. Well, the same for podcast listeners. And so that's why I really want potential guests to pitch with that benefit in mind. And so they will be able to say, you know, dear, you know, whoever the podcast host is, having reviewed listen to a couple of episodes of yours. Here is how I believe my story aligns with your readers. And these are the benefits I believe that they can take away. And that is the kind of thing that perks a podcaster's ears up. The thing that doesn't perk their ear up is a form letter that says, hi, I have a book coming out in April. And so I'd like to schedule a an appointment to record. That does not at all bring them value or show that you cared. But when you have gotten to know who their audience is, and when you are very clear on what your book's takeaway is, and you believe that your book's takeaway will benefit their readers, fantastic. You have a match. There's a date. As you're doing more and more podcast interviews, if you can tell the podcaster, again, what benefits they get, that you will help promote the interview once it's posted, if they would only let you know, and sometimes they'll forget, so forgive them and just check in on that podcast. You'll find out that it's posted and you didn't know about it. You'll put it on your social media pages. You'll put a link to it on your website under your event section. And by the way, that increases your search engine optimization every time you do that. So make sure that you're going to be a partner in the promotion of this interview. Remember the benefit to you is not small. Typically, this is something that comes free to you. It is certainly not to the podcaster. So they're putting in a lot of resources that cost. For you, it's free. And yet somebody could find that amazing interview years later and become your next super fan. So it's really worth putting the effort into this. That is so helpful. So 
this process, let's say the writer has grabbed their attention with a great jazzy uh, subject line, and then they introduce themselves and they let them know three things that they can speak on. They demonstrate the value to the podcast or the value their audience will get from this interview. And then how do you want to wrap it up? How do you want to close up your communication? Well, I would certainly, if you have, if your book has garnered any awards, some special publicity, something like that, that could also add value, don't hesitate very briefly to mention that as well. And then graciously thank the podcaster for their consideration and time and acknowledging that you know that they are busy and that you would check back around one time to make sure that they've received your pitch. And I would close that let them know where your website, your author website is and how they can best reach you. That's important because they're going to want to verify who you are and what you're all about. And you reduce their risk in a sense by having that very beautiful website, even if it's free to put up that you have kept updated and that tells something about you. So they can verify that. Then after you have hit send, Take a deep breath and congratulate yourself that you're in the game for the, the game of rejection. <laughs> and it's wonderful. If the podcaster writes you back soon and lets you know that you may be a match or they'd like to talk to you, that is fantastic. If they don't, I would wait about three weeks and then gently reach back one time only to maybe with your original pitch and or not, you could take the old pitch and send items and forward it with a new message, or you could just start a new message saying with the subject line, checking on pitch dated, blah, 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 so that it's clear to them why you're contacting them. They, oh, they don't need to dig for that in three sentences or five sentences. Let them know straight up why you're contacting them, what you're all about, and that you just wanted to check to see if they've received it and then let it go. Now that doesn't mean you can never, ever, ever pitch them again, but I would hesitate to pitch them ever again unless something big changed either with a new publication or something magical happened with your book like it was optioned for television or movies or you won 10 awards and the Pulitzer Prize. When that happens, go ahead and reach back out. But until then I would say stop, that, that, you know, just move on to the next opportunity to be on a, as a podcast guest. I wanted to jump up and down after about each of your sentences. I really want for our writers to hear um, what Lizbeth said about having a professional website, identifying you as a communicator, because that is what legitimizes you as a communicator. And so don't make it difficult for them. Give them that link straight to your website so that they don't have to do any extra work. You make it easy for them to know what you're communicating and that you do it well. So thank you so much for saying that. And I'm of the mind that we learn a lot um, by hearing what not to do. So before we make some of these mistakes, what would you advise writers not to do when they're pitching podcasts? One thing I would definitely advise writers not to do is to create a form letter pitch and to start forwarding it to podcasts indiscriminately. That tells them that you did not do your homework, that you do not care about their audience, and frankly, that you are all about yourself. Another thing, if in fact you are granted an interview, is you don't want to answer every question with, as I said in my book, blah, blah, blah. When you're asked a question, remember the podcast host does care about you if they're a good host, but they definitely care. Their readers are their bread and butter. And so they want to have a good dialogue with you. What they don't want is to be referred externally every time they ask you a question. So if you say that once, consider it done during the interview, and then that's about it. Because they're going to ask you at the end, a good podcaster will ask you as a call to action at the very end, where can our listeners learn more about you and your book? So have the faith in that. And you may want to discuss that with the podcaster if you get a chance to speak with them in advance. You don't want to go on and on and on during a question, 
giving it a long, long, long answer like I just did for you, uh, because this is supposed to be a dialogue. A podcast is definitely a dialogue between you and the podcast host for the readers. And so just remember to take a breath. Some people have recommended that you have a glass of water with you and to make sure that your water is the balance of it is going down a little bit during the interview. That means you took a breath and let the podcast host speak. Okay, we are learning what not to do when pitching podcasts. Anything else you want to say about that? Another thing is because podcasts raise your anxiety, it's just normal to be a little anxious. Is my internet good? Is my sound, lighting, everything? Is it good? You want to find out if that podcast is going to be videotaped. But go ahead and get a piece of paper and a pen and write down questions that the host asks you if you decide you want to double back. I would definitely encourage you to write down the host's name and the name of the podcast to keep it by you because even though you know it, when you get nervous, you may draw a blank and it just really helps prevent awkward <laughs> awkwardness <laughs> if you could just look it over and remember their name. I really like what you said about sort of making that distinction between self-promotion and serving their audience. Because at the end of the podcast, you know, that podcaster will have had an experience of you. And if you were only doing self-promotion, you will not get invited back. But if you're calling them by name, if you're mentioning their podcast, if you're offering value to their audience, they are going to count. I know they're going to count their time with you as a win. That is so true. What a great point. And also remember, just like writers and we write in communities, correct? Podcasters operate in communities. Every podcaster has a friend who podcasts, who's going to say, man, I had Margo on my program and she was fantastic. But if you give them a negative taste in their mouth, they also will say the opposite to their podcasting friends. So you just want to keep it valuable and enjoyable for all concerned. I feel like you've just brought us to the moment. Let's say that my pitch has been a success. They've invited me to be on their podcast. Lizbeth, tell us how to be a good guest. I am so excited for this because it's an exciting moment when you know that you're about to be on a podcast. So again, you want to be very clear on some details. Are you going to be on Go Meeting? Are you going to be on Zoom? Look at the links that they send you and even make sure that your computer is updated, that you have your updates ready, that your internet is working. Show up a little early if at all possible and text the host if it's not possible or if you're running late. Try to remember that their technology may fail them at some point and even though you're anxious, and anxiety is something I live with a lot, and it does not bring out my best. So make sure that your anxiety doesn't become their problem and you get grouchy at them if, if they are delayed. Um, knowing what questions to be prepared for, even by listening to a past episode of theirs, will help. Be very clear if it's going to be videotaped like today is with you. As an example, you and I are speaking, but there's videotape or if it's just audio. I have made the mistake of showing up looking like an unmade bed and <laughs> finding out that we were going on camera because I didn't ask and they forgot to mention it. <laughs> it's not great. So that's okay. I have a good personality and we can all just say, you know what, we're gonna get through this. <laughs> but anyway, um, so just being very clear what those parameters are and making sure you know when the, when the podcast will end, when, when this interview will end, so that you don't take too much time on any one thing and they're quietly wishing you would hurry it on up. I think those are some of the main things. If you could be away from the forced air being on and off, if you have air conditioning or a heater, that's fantastic. If you have a microphone, fabulous. If you don't, stay away from wood floors and high ceilings because you'll always sound bad there. And, um, you know, just, I'm not saying go spend a bunch of money uh, for this interview, but you want to make it as quality as possible for them. I have learned so much and gosh, 
where can our audience even find you and connect with you? Thank you for asking. I am at lameredith.com. I also teach book marketing on Teachable at different times of the year and have a podcast called Persistence You with Lizbeth that will be launching in just days. And can we subscribe to get all of your news and info? Oh, I would be so excited if you would. And probably that you can find me on social media, but the easiest way is at lameredith.com and become a member of my newsletter list if you like. Thank you so much for being with us. Thank you for having me. I loved this. Thank you so much. Writers, you can do this.